Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time and participation today as we uh, we're just a few days away from the start of the 2022-23 Premier Hockey Federation season and, and uh, what better way to to kick start our our uh, media availability than to, to speak with our, our newest members from La Montreal. I'm pleased to welcome uh, newly appointed head coach Peter Smith and newly appointed captain and Sophie Bate. Uh, they're here to to take your questions to help uh, preview the series. Uh, just while we uh, compile the queue for questions, I'll ask you to raise your digital hand, but uh, I'll ask uh, each of Peter and Anne Sophie to provide a few opening remarks. And uh, Coach, we'll start with you. I think it's Peter Smith. Uh, just coming up two months two months since your your appointment to the position. Um, maybe just a few words about how all of that came to fruition and and how uh, training camp has been has been going with the team. And I'm sure it's just. Uh, been a lot of things on the go for for La Force as you anticipate your opening weekend in Buffalo. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, uh, welcome, everyone. It's uh, nice to see you all here. Thanks for coming. Um, first question, Paul. Uh, you know, how did I get involved? I got I got contacted uh, by the team, as I think everybody knows. I had retired um, from McGill, and, and uh, I guess I was available. <laughs> So I got contacted, and um, you know, it was a series of, of talks, um, both with the uh, with the force and also with the league. And um, I really found the um, the opportunity uh, very attractive, and uh, here I am. In terms of the uh, the team, it's been a great start. To be honest with you, we've had a great uh, training camp. Uh, we've got a wonderful group. Uh, work hard and want to learn and they're making that transition from being college players and amateurs to to being professionals uh, we as coaches are doing everything we can to, to help with that transition and get them ready for the uh, for the start of the season so been real good uh, real good so far um, we've only had the one preseason game um, would have liked to have had a couple more but circumstances just dictated uh, that that wouldn't work out uh, but we're We've got three good practices coming up and then get on the bus on Friday and head down to Buffalo. So I think players, coaches, everybody involved with the uh, with the group is, is really looking forward to that. Great. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, and Sophie, captain of uh, La Force, uh, maybe just a few words about, uh, again, uh, how, how training camp's been going, how the, the uh, uh, camaraderie's been forming with your team and, and just how excited you are to play your first uh, PHF games. Yeah, I think uh, as Peter mentioned, we've had a great training camp. I mean, we have uh, faith in the coaches and they're doing everything they can uh, on their standpoint to, to structure the practices to, to form our team and to make sure, you know, we get better every day. And it's it's not easy to start from scratch as a team. You know, when we look at other teams, they've had chemistry in the past years. They had a good base. Um, but we have all the good places, uh, all the good people in place to make sure we have a good organization and to start from right from the beginning. And for us as player, I mean, we're all excited. I remember when we went to Vermont, we were just so excited to play our first game, even if it was ex ex exhibition game. But um, now that the first league game is coming up, we're all thrilled to, to be able to play. We've practiced for so long, not only this season, but in the, pa the past few years. And I've mentioned this over and over again. I can't wait to fight and play for a championship. And this is the start. It's going to be on on Saturday, so we're all excited, and uh, and we we've de developed the chemistry on and off the ice, and I think it's going to keep growing and building together uh, as the years go on. Thank you very much. Um, take your questions now, folks. Uh, for those that would like to ask a question, please raise your digital hand on the Zoom console, and I will uh, call on you when ready. Uh, and of course, I'll mention uh, questions can uh, certainly be delivered in English uh, or en français. Uh, we'll begin with uh, uh, Nicholas. Can I ask you to unmute and proceed, please? Cette équipe là qui nous qui la connaissons pas encore uh, tout à fait. Mais c'est des petites forces de, de nous tous. Hein? Peter l'a mentionné tantôt. On veut s'améliorer de jour en jour. C'est exactement uh, notre identité ou notre culture qu'on qu veut démontrer tout au long de l'année. Et est-ce qu'il y aura une certaine période d'adaptation, étant donné que ce sont des nouvelles joueuses dans une pour, pour les victoires? Le personnel d'entraîneur et les joueurs de, avec lesquels l'équipe est formée, je suis très, très en confiance d'avoir le meilleur produit sur la glace et qu'à chaque jour, bien, on, on va donner le meilleur de nous-mêmes pour, pour avoir un bon spectacle. Mais une chose, on va jouer comme on va gagner tous les 
see Nicholas. Um, take our next question from uh, Alex. Azzy, you can proceed and mute and ask your question, please. Sure, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, Peter, I'll start with you. Um, I know that part of the team's plan this season is to tour Quebec. Um, some of the games are quite far away. Could you tell me a little bit about um, both the team's preparation for having home games that aren't quite uh, so close to home and, and um, just how you're kind of preparing for that season on the road? <laughs> Yeah, when you look at our schedule, we realize that we play, uh, we actually play 23 out of 24 regular season games on the road, if you will. Um, you know, I, I think, <clears throat> you know, there's two sides to that. Um, clearly, for a first year team, I think it's a really good opportunity to spread the word across the province. I think we have that opportunity. I think the players have embraced that opportunity and look forward to it. Um, some of the, uh, the, our home games are going to be in, in places where people are from. Uh, for example, Anne Sophie, we'll be playing in Setil, where she grew up. Um, I know we'll get a tremendous amount of support uh, support there, mostly from her family, but others as well. <laughs> um, so, you know, there, there's that positive. The, the, the downside is, is that we're on the road, 23 out of 24 games. So, um, you know, our, our home game win, you know, you ask how we prepare for that. Um, you know, we prepare for every game um, the same. Um, I think we've done a real good, on, from a hockey standpoint, I think, um, you know, we have a real good group. We're running the logistical side of things to make sure that we travel on time and, you know, eat properly and do all those things. Um, normally, we would have 12 games on the road, and this year we have 11 additional ones. So I think that that's a big part of it as well. And then just the, the idea of putting it out there. All the players know what the schedule is. All the players know what we have going. Um, all the players know that um, it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, you know, some of the games are in the Montreal area, so that works out fairly well. The games that are, are further away and in more remote areas of Quebec will be playing in links that we've never played in before. So um, but they've all been previewed. They've all been looked at. We have information on them. So here we go. Um, and then, Anne Sophie, could you just tell me a little bit about the team's dynamic, kind of what you've enjoyed most about getting this group of players together on the ice and getting to know all of them? Yeah, well, actually, I think it's you mentioned it's just to get to know them. And, you know, we... <laughs> We, we saw the pictures at the beginning who were the, the roster was being launched, but we didn't really know who the player was. So it was a, it, it was a good opportunity to get to know them. Uh, and, you know, even the traveling for us will be a good team bonding. Every time we go away on the road, it's a chance for us to get to know each other even more. I mean, as, as people, uh, and then our practices allow us to, go, to get to know each other on the ice because every player is different. Um, so it's just the more we do it, the better we get to know each other and the better we can become the best team uh, on the ice. Um, and then one final question, um, Anne Sophie was curious. Um, I don't think any players from the force have um, disclosed their salary. I think it's the only PHF team where no one's disclosed. And I was just curious if that was a group decision or just everyone made that same individual decision. Yeah, it was kind of a group decision. I mean, we we discussed it a little bit. Uh, we've had our the management man man manager management. <laughs> the people who deal with us. <laughs> uh, we just discussed that for the first year. This is going to be in the in the future. How is is it going to change? I don't know. But for this one year, uh, we thought it was a group decision that we just uh, didn't want to disclose our, our salary. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. I'll uh, take next questions from uh, Erica. Go ahead, please. Hey, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, for, for Peter, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, um, and Sophie has talked about this being a different team, the travel and whatnot. I'm curious what you and the coaching staff are doing to um, perhaps try to build that, that chemistry, knowing that it's a very unique situation and that you will be traveling both when you're uh, hosting <laughs> and when you're on the road. Um, well, I, I think they... You know where we've had the most contact with the players has been at uh, at practice. Um, I think for us as coaches, the, the main part was to build those relationships to get to know. The players. I don't we're know. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, Peter. No, Please no, proceed. Okay. I'll, I'll carry on. <laughs> um, you know, to build those relationships with for, uh, with the players um, as coaches. First of all, I think that that's real important. Um, our on ice. Um, 
you know, performance has been has been great. And we've had the opportunity to do a lot of different things. So we've done a lot of collective things. We've done a lot of, um, you know, small area games, those kinds of things. The players get to know each other from that basis as well. Uh, we've got a team room here. They get to know each other there. Um, I think that that's worked out real well. We had some team building um, activities on uh, this past weekend. That's worked out well. Um, I'm, I'm in a fortunate um, situation where I have coached 13 of the of the 22 players before, um, so I know them quite well. And even and and even the remaining players I know of, uh, you know, for, through their college days and university days and all that. So it's it's just been we just tried to take the opportunity to 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 build those relationships and we remind the players of that and that, that hasn't been an issue at all they recognize that the they're a group that wants to be together they enjoy each other they do you know we have our office training together um i mean things have gone and we've got great leadership you know people like Anne and sophie and uh, sarah the ford and uh, um catherine Dao, um that's our leadership group and they've done a, a terrific job to bring everybody together so Gone very well, to be honest with you. You know, when you start, uh, I'll just add to that. Uh, you, you know, and as so um, alluded to this earlier, you start, you know, with a group that, uh, you know, most of the other teams they've been to, they've had at least part of the team together, and we we have it. So even though some of them have played together before, it's a new environment, and in many cases, new coaches, and so we we take that into consideration. And also, um, I'd like to ask, given all of that and, and your experience in coaching, um, I'm curious if there are specific things that you've brought to the Montreal Force that you would like to enforce. <laughs> you know, what, what do you hope will be the team identity in, in the first year? At least, what, what are you willing to share with us uh, just as far as the, the makeup of this team and how you hope they'll perform on the ice? Yeah, I, I think that um, for me, the, the team identity is all about compete. Um, you know, we again, I said this before that these players have moved from being amateurs into to pros, and now they're in a situation where, um, you know, the compete level, even though they're great competitors and always have been, um, it's a slightly different situation now. And so, I think if there was, you know, that compete level, um, you know, regardless of circumstance, whether we're up a goal or down a goal, or we've won a couple in a row, or we've lost a couple in a row, that the team sticks with it and competes real hard. That, that would be the identity that I think we're looking for at this level. Thank you so much. And, and Sophie, I'd like to come to you for, for two questions. One is, um, given your experience at the international level, at the pro level, I'm curious, um, as you're bringing a team together, some that you've played with at various you know, parts along your journey and some that are new, um, what are you expecting regarding what you know about PHF competition? That's the first one. And then the second one should be pretty straightforward, but I'd love to hear you say your name as you would like like us to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start with the second one. <laughs> Actually, well, in French, is when you say "ez," it's it's like um, like you say "vous avez," you won't say "vous avez," you know. So a lot of people say "betais" or "bete," but it's actually "beti." Like like you would bet on something. Like you could bet in French, you say "oh, je vais bete sur elle," you know. So you could bet on me. <laughs> but my name is Anne Sophie Beti. Um, all this to say, I mean, uh, the great uh, the, the great chance we have actually is that everybody has has had a leadership role in the past in their in their ex existing team. Uh, some of them were captains, some of them were assistant, and that's what I I told uh, the coaching staff is that for me, yes, I'm the leader of this team. I have the the C on my jersey, but it's a very it's a teamwork uh, environment and a delegation stuff. Like I don't want to do this on my own because I couldn't, and that's the, the strength of our team is that. Everybody has had leadership roles, uh, so everybody has um, is able to contribute to uh, to the success of this team uh, in terms of leadership, and in terms of like my my experience. Of course, I've you know I, I was talking. We were doing an exercise, and we had to rank each other from the youngest to the oldest. And then obviously everybody said you go at the end. <laughs> but when the first one said her her year when she was born, I was like, oh okay. But you know what? This difference, I don't feel it at all. Uh, I mean, you know, even if we have a couple years difference or years gap, at the end of the day, we're all passionate for the sport. And what brought me here is is the passion that I have for the sport. And if I'm able to to give that on to the the younger, the younger ones that are coming in or who just graduated from, from university and even for, for the next or the people who are in the stands, you know, when I look back uh, 10 years ago, I don't think I 
I would have predicted at 35 years old, I'd still be playing, but uh, I'm really glad that the PHF opportunity showed up in Montreal and allowed me to, to be able to continue and play. And, and it's actually a dream for, for me to, to be able to be paid and play hockey. You know, we have said that in the past where we've paid, we, we, we were professional hockey players, but volunteer professional hockey players. And now it's, it's all becoming real. And as Peter said, we have to make sure that, you know, there's no excuses anymore. Like this is, this is part of our job. This is who we are. And we want to make uh, the league better. We want to make the Montreal team better. And, you know, that's, we're going to do that by being better people, but, you know, by working as hard as we can and being competitive, uh, just like Peter said. And, you know, when, when this team started and, you know, we, we were launching the players and I was like, who's going to be our coach. And in my head, I knew, I knew he had to be Peter. Uh, I know he had the, he has a lot of experience in women's hockey. He was able to, to build the team of McGill when they were not so good <laughs> back then. Uh, he did something great with, Uh, with the team uh, being able to win a few national championships. Uh, so that's uh, give him a lot of credit for, for being able to get out of retirement and actually thank his wife to, to let him, <laughs> to let him leave the house uh, because he's a, a real value to uh, the Montreal force. Thank you, Erica and Anne Sophie. Uh, our next question will come from uh, Pat Hickey, Montreal Gazette. Uh, Pat, you can unmute and proceed, please. Yeah, Peter, it's great to see you back behind the net. Uh, behind the nets, uh, uh, and so Pete, can I just ask you a question? You you've been involved for several years with the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. What made you decide, and you and other players decide to go with the uh, the new group? I've said this before, and I wanted to play for a championship. I wanted to build something with the team, being able to practice every day or almost every day, but every time we get a chance with the same group of players, you know, we have the opportunity to practice three times a week to get better at the team. And, you know, that's what I was lacking. I wanted to play for a championship. And, you know, these are, this is one of the main reasons I wanted to, to switch over with the PHF. Great. Bonne chance. Merci. Thank you, Pat. Uh, John Warrow can uh, unmute and proceed, please. Hey, John Warrell with the Associated Press. Uh, this is also for Anne Sophie. And um, I was going to ask about the, the PWHPA, but um, you just answered that. But I was wondering when you see uh, the type of contract that uh, Michaela Grant Mentis um, signed back in May, um, reported at eighty thousand um, dollars. What 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 message did that did that send to you and and your fellow players, knowing that that kind of money was out there? Well, you know, we, we've done this for, we've played hockey because we love the game. We're not necessarily for the money. I mean, now it's a, it's a plus and it's an addition that we're lucky to get paid. And this is what we want to work for. But it's still a surprise where, you know, I can't believe today that we actually get paid to play hockey, to, to do what we love. And, and so it's not necessarily say, like, I know the salary cap has increased over the last years and with the inflation getting higher and higher, hopefully it's going to keep increasing. But, you know, ultimately what we want is to be able to give uh, a job to everyone and, and that they could solely focus on, on, you know, getting better every day, getting the rest they need, getting the treatment they, just like pro hockey or any pro other athletes would do. Um, so I, I would say, like, I don't think none of us did it for the money, but more just it was an opportunity for us uh, to be able to, to have an addition or a little candy at the end, you know. I guess just, just as a follow-up, could you have imagined that kind of money being available three years ago? You know, when the CWHL folded, maybe three, four years ago. No, well, like in the moment, it's hard just to think forward. I mean, yeah, we want to work uh, to have to have a professional league and have a, like a reasonable salary, you know, like um, it, it was hard to imagine because we're so devastated for from the closing of the league and You know, but it, it, I'm just happy where women's hockey has growth, like the growth of women's hockey has taken us uh, over the last uh, last few years and hoping that in the next few years, it will keep going and <clears throat> will be even better for, for them. Maybe not for me, because I don't know how long I'll be around, but for, for the other people. And lastly, was there any pushback when from the PWHP? I know they've been open-minded about, you know, the advantages and opportunities that the PHF presents, but um, was there any pushback when, when, when you made the jump or, or what was the reaction when, when you made the jump to the PHF? I mean, I have, nobody uh, has like stopped me from doing it or I, I didn't have any uh, bad news or 
you know, I, for me, it was, it was a, I guess I'll put it this way, like a selfish decision where I am in my life. This is what uh, fit for me, the team aspect, uh, you know, and, and I don't want to compare the association with the league. It's, you know, they, they have what they have going on. And for us, for me, the opportunity of having a franchise in Montreal, I mean, it, it was, it was the right fit for me to, to be part of the team and, you know, to work uh, towards a common goal. This is what I've been lacking in the last few years. And that's what I wanted to do. And so I didn't have any resistance or uh, whatsoever. Well, that's uh, wonderful to hear. Thank you very much and all the best to you this season. Thank you. Thank you, John and Anne-Sophie. Uh, we just have a couple of minutes remaining uh, in our window here, folks, but I will take uh, further questions if there are. Uh, Pat, I still see your hand up. I just make, make sure that was, if that's for a follow-up, you can proceed. If, if not, we'll move on. Okay, I think that's, is there any other follow-ups uh, at this time? Just one last call for anyone's uh, digital hand to be raised. Okay, Alex, you can uh, unmute and proceed, please. Yeah, and Sophie, um, just something that you said a moment ago, like a selfish decision. Um, I I always think of that word in sports because I think it has a negative connotation, right, of, of selfishness, but athletes also have to take care of themselves, everything from sleep to food. And I was wondering if you could just expand a little bit on, on what you meant there. Well, you know, what I in the sense that, you know, in the last year I was part of the PWHPA and, you know, People sometimes ask me why, like, you don't believe in the league anymore, in the, in the association. And for me, it was just an opportunity. And if I'm able to do something, you know, I guess as, as team athletes, uh, we sometimes forget ourselves. Um, but if you're able to be, to be stable in your mind and your heart, um, and then you're doing things for yourself, then you'll be able to do things for others as well. It's like if you go into a relationship and you're not, you know, you, you jump, from one relationship to the other if you're not comfortable being okay on your own then you won't be open to to receive somebody else in your life and for me in this you know we've talked about a lot of the next generation want to make, make a professional uh professional league uh, well this phf league is is here and and it was a good opportunity for me to, to step in, into that direction and it was a great challenge i mean starting from scratch and you know it's not an easy decision but I, in the sense and selfish where in my life, where I was at, I needed to play with a team and I needed to play for a championship and the PHF is what responded to those criteria. So that's why I'm saying I'm making a selfish decision and making and responding to what my values and what my needs were. Uh, the PHF responded to, um, to those questions. Thank you so much for expanding on that. Thank you, Alex. And once again, thank you, Anne-Sophie. At this time, I see no further uh, hands or questions, so we will we will wrap up with that. Uh, thank you again to uh, La Force Captain Anne-Sophie Bate and uh, Coach Peter Smith. We look forward to seeing uh, La Force in their in their PHF debut uh, this weekend in, in Buffalo, and, and wish you all the best in your in your travels and, and competition on the ice. And, and thank you again to all of our media for uh, your time and participation.